All right, doing another camera experiment, so you have to bear with this. Um, sorry about the volume on the other one. You know, I can't play the sound. I can't play the videos in the editor um, as it crashes. So sometimes I don't know if the volume is not similar between clips, if I switch clips for volume. But anyway, um, we are working on uh, We'll fix these little bugs. So anyway, trying something new. Um, trying rotating the 16 by 9 image and then putting that in a high definition video with something in the other box of course which is going to probably be a, a macro I did with I did a modification to this old flip you know the oldest version which I like these are so durable and tough I mean it was you know the resolution isn't great I mean it's only 640 by 480 but um, you know they're just such a nice you know they're got a little weight to them they're batteries you can well, anyway, I'll do a videos on video cameras because uh, a lot of lame bullshit in these cameras. Um, so anyway, um, but yeah, I did a, an augmented it, put a macro lens, glued one on there. So this will be my little quick macro camera. I mean, it is quick, you know. I mean, you just hit the button. So you hit the button, and it goes a little flippy thing, and then you just say, you know, you hit the little red button, and it goes, and you know, the upload is easy. And it's AVI file, and you know. It's really well, anyway. So, um, the accompanying video is Fruit Flies. Yeah, yeah, they, they trapped some in a bag. I had a problem because I bought too many apples and one of them must have gone bad and whatever. But anyway, um, so, um, yeah, and so I was just contemplating them. I was actually talking to somebody last night. Um, it was a regular fly. I got in the house yesterday because I had the damn door open. So I was dusting. Um, got a vacuum later, but that's always funny. Uh, but anyway, um, where was I? Yeah, the fruit fly thing. Um, uh, so anyway, I was talking to somebody, you know, YouTube guy. Uh, but anyway, um, and, uh, you know, I've uh, refreshed my brain on this stuff. But it's really this whole what we are thing. And, uh, so anyway, if you just look at these fruit flies, I mean, they know how to fly automatically. You know, they're born with it. Um. You know, they're just amazing what's going on in this little, tiny, tiny speck of a brain. I mean, how many, if you took our whole brain and dissected it, I mean, weighted or I mean, however you want to go. I mean, how many fruit fly brains worth of neurons do we have? Like 10 zillion fruit flies, a billion fruit fly brains? I mean, we should be doing kick-ass. We should be doing a hell of a lot better than we're doing, considering how much software potential, um, you know, we have space-wise. And so obviously our brain is not wired as efficiently as a fruit fly. I mean, you know, for raw processing power. Um, I mean, it's getting a lot more out of it. I mean, the dynamics of flight is not, you know, three dots of code. I mean, it's a little complex. It's just, just not wing down, wing up thing. You know, it's more complicated than that. And uh, to have that built in is pretty amazing. Um, but the problem with humans is, is you know, the real catch is, is that our brain was developed not to do the built-in thing, so there was no set agenda for the brain function, for the software, for the program. And that's why it's such sloppy code, is because it doesn't have a set function. You know, it's, it's not a, a set mission like, God, that flying is going to really irritate me. Um, anyway, um, yeah, there's, so there's no set mission. There's no set agenda like flight or like driving a car or like some mechanical skill like architecture or physics or biology but just think of if it took as much brain power to know you know all of what we know of biological science would take maybe the same amount of processing powers it takes to for, for a fruit fly to successfully fly and navigate and you know interact and move and do all that stuff that it's doing I mean, theoretically, that makes, you know, some sort of vague sense that, that that would be comparable processing power. I mean, you know, with a billion fruit fly brain power, we should be able to conquer all the sciences, everything, all, you know, we, we should be incredibly intelligent. Um, but we're not. Um, we seem so dim and slow by comparison. I mean, this little tiny thing is having this intricate, complex, um, very fast sensually, you know, bombarded and reacting and reacting and we seem, our reflexes seem so clunky and slow and our thoughts and everything's so slow by comparison. 
and so I don't think we're the 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 best complexity can lead to. Um, you know, it could do a lot better, um, but you know, we weren't we were designed through evolution, and it wasn't with a designed mission. You know, swim or fly or run or whatever the thing you want to maximize is, and so that's why our software is so as it's doing this learning sloppy learning thing and and you know it takes 20 years to come to the simplest conclusions and to organize the a b c d's the one two three four to get the things in the right order for the software to even be functional um, to even know your business um, you know you have to just filter through all the chaos and the slop that that is um, our life experience to try to glean it into some kind of simple, you know, in the end, equations um, that are more functional uh, than, you know, the mush that you start with. Uh, so where am I going with this? Um, yeah, well, I just it just points out that, um, you know, we think of ourselves, you know, Matt's even used the word, like, we are more complex, like we're somehow higher on the complexity scale. And no, I don't think we are necessarily. I don't think that fruit fly is any less complex than we are. It's just designed for a narrower functionality. It doesn't need to know physics to do what it has to do to function, to do what it has to do with its little organs and its little parts and to accomplish its um, reproduction task. And uh, so it doesn't lack complexity. It lacks the the sloppy directionality that we um, acquired through a, a very eccentric niche environment that we were exploiting where sociology and um, you know defensive strategies um, uh, were, were what was rewarded this more complex complicated lifestyle and we, have, we just have a more complicated lifestyle because of the environment we um, we're exploiting. It required that nuance of behavior. Um, you know, we had to not only find food, but we had to avoid predators and do all that. You know, in a in a, in a way that um, demanded more modeling skills, more anticipation, more. Um, um, it just wasn't might that made the game. You had to have the the right brain stuff to do to play to succeed. In, um, to be as adaptable, I guess, too. That, that was sort of our, um, you know, the, the, the thing that made humans so successful was that adaptability. They took, they, they took on many different environments, you know, from deserts to icebergs. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know if I have to keep banging at this one. But it just is something to ponder, boy. You, you, you look at something so tiny having such a functional brain and and uh, it's humbling uh, to just appreciate just how as much as this language thing and this sentient complex thought romantic bullshit that goes on in our heads is interesting um, it is clunky it is sloppy and and pretty dysfunctional um, by comparison uh, the mass is certainly by mass but that's another thing where you know our brain I think is I mean I don't think there's brain we're not using we're using it all we, we store memories and some of those yeah you know to, to gain something you have to let go of something in a way um, but the space the brain does take up is kind of a, a weird circumstance because there doesn't seem to have much advantage to having a big head because it's tougher on women to give birth and all that other stuff and it does seem that the facts indicate that our brain could take up a lot less space. Um, there's people who are born with fluid in their brain, and it pushes their brain mass basically to the outside of their skull. And their brain, their actual neurons, occupy far less space. Uh, they don't lose any mental capacity. Their brain just takes up less space. And so even right there, there's a sort of inefficiency in our design where it could have evolved where we didn't need to have this big a brain to do this functionality it just didn't evolve that way I mean it could have been more it could have been like an mp4 file instead of an mpg file I mean, it could have been just much better 
compressed um, the algorithm of our brain structure could have been um, better optimized um, but we just didn't evolve that way it just didn't happen that um, that evolutionary branch we didn't fall on it <laughs> or we didn't climb out on it um, by circumstance so anyway enough of a video I think uh, so yeah doing some experiments so videos will be a little weird uh, until I'm done experimenting which will probably be never but anyway that's that's all uh, thank you very much and such you know,